Hi everybody and welcome back. Let's get to the story. The next day, Abuelita's sisters came for her in a wagon. The nuns, dressed in their black and white habits, gently lifted Abuelita into the back. They pulled a blanket under her chin and Esperanza went to her and held her hand. She remembered the night that Alfonso and Miguel brought Papa home in the wagon. How long ago was that? She knew it had only been a few weeks, but it felt like a lifetime ago. Esperanza tenderly hugged and kissed Abuelita. Mi nienta. We won't be able to communicate. The mail is unpredictable, and I'm sure your uncles will be watching my correspondence. But I will come. Of that you can be certain. While you are waiting, finish this for me. She handed Esperanza a bundle of crocheting. Look at the zigzag of the blanket. Mountains and valleys. Right now, you are in the bottom of the valley, and your problems loom big around you. But soon, you will be at the top of the mountain again, after you have lived m many mountains and valleys. We will be together. Through her tears, Esperanza said, Please get well. Please come to us. I promise. And you promise to take care of Mama for me. Next, it was Mama's turn. Esperanza could not watch. She buried her head in Hortensia's sh uh, shoulder until she heard the wagon pulling away. Then she went to Mama and put her arms around her. They watched the wagon disappear down the path until it was a speck in the distance, until even the dust was gone. That's when Esperanza noticed the old trunk with leather straps that the nuns had left. What's in the trunk? she asked. Our papers to travel and clothes from the poor box at the convent. The poor box? People donate them, said Mama, for others who cannot afford to buy their own. Mama, at a time like this, must we worry about some poor family who needs clothes? Esperanza, said Mama. We have a little money, and Hortensia, Alfonso, and Miguel are no longer our servants. We are indebted to them for our finances and our future. And that trunk of clothes for the poor? Esperanza, it is for us. Senor Rodriguez was the only person they could trust. He came after dark for secret meetings, always carrying a basket of figs for the grieving family to disguise his real reason for visiting. Esperanza fell asleep each night on a blanket on the floor, listening to the adults' hushed voices and mysterious plans, and smelling the plentiful piles of white figs that she knew would never be eaten. At the end of the week, Esperanza was sitting on the small step to Hortensia's and Alfonso's cabin when Theo Lewis rode up. He reminded, oh, sorry, he remained on his horse and he sent Alfonso to bring Mama. A few moment, in a few moments, Mama walked toward them, drying her hands on her apron. She held her head high and looked beautiful even dressed in the old clothes from the poor box. Louis, I have considered your proposal, and in the interest of the servants in Esperanza, I will marry you in due time, but you must begin re replanting and rebuilding immediately as the servants need their jobs. Esperanza was quiet and stared at the dirt, hiding the smirk on her face. Theo Lewis could not contain his grin. He sat up straighter. I knew you would come to your senses, Ramona. I will announce the engagement at once. Mama nodded, almost bowing. One more thing, she said. We will need a, va uh, need a wagon to visit Abuelita. She is at the convent in La Purisima. I must see her every few weeks. 
I will send one over this afternoon, said Tio Lewis, smiling. A new one. And those clothes, Ramona. They are not fitting for a woman of your stature. And Esperanza looks like a waif. I will send a dressmaker next week with new fabrics. In the nicest way possible, Esperanza looked up and said, Thank you, Tio Lewis. I'm happy that you'll be taking care of us. Yes, of course, he said, not even glancing at her. Esperanza smiled at him anyway, because she knew she would never spend a night in the same house with him, and he would never be her stepfather. She almost wished she would be able to see his face when he realized that they had escaped. He wouldn't be grinning like a proud rooster then.